that's true. And the two blessings do come in the mass. Don't turn on the bus too. But at that time, you your financial standing, go ahead and need all that when the blessings come. You see me blessing you. So then, most of mass, we would congratulate you on a beautiful marriage. So Mr. and Mrs. Mr. Holland here today, we congratulate you on your marriage. And the epistle for this marriage mass, the nuptial mass, is taken, St. Paul's out of the Ephesians, chapter 5. Brethren, that wives are subject to their husbands, as is the Lord, because a husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. Being himself savior of the body. Also lies who be with their husband Christ into the church. Love his wife just as he loves himself. And let the wife respect her husband from the gospel. Taking the according, that according to St. Matthew. And there came to Jesus some things testing him. And said to them, Have you not read of the Creator from the beginning, Father? And cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Therefore now they are no longer two, but one flesh. But therefore God has joined together, let no man put his son in. Those were the words of today's holy gospel. Back to the very beginning of history, and we see that mystery, a very beautiful, profound mystery. God created the entire world, and he made it most beautiful. He created this entire world. He created the stars. He created the planets. He created this infinitely large universe. Created all the beautiful animals and plants. In order to decorate a place, he went through three stage, two stages, as St. Thomas Aquinas. The first three days of his great work, he made the distinction of things. And he made the heavens and the earth. He made waters below. And then on the last three days, he adorned and ornamented the beautiful things that he created. And he put the, the, the animals upon the earth. He put life upon the earth. He ornamented the ground with all the, non, with all the living things that are the animals that walk on the earth. He ornamented the sea with fishes. He ornamented the sky with birds. And he ornamented the great heavens with the sun, the moon, and the stars. And he ornamented everything that he made. So he made everything beautiful. And then he made it more beautiful in the last three days. And at the very end of that work, finally, he took some slime of the earth. He took a little bit of mud, and from that mud, he created Adam. And when he made Adam, he told Adam, Adam, I have made all these things for you. I have made all this for you. All, all this work of these six days, I did for you. This entire beautiful world, I made so that you would be in it. Animals, go out and look at this world that I made for you. And Adam went out. And two things happened while Adam went out. One of them was that Adam saw the most beautiful creation of God, and he saw no creature like unto himself. And the other is that God spoke Father, Son, and Holy Ghost together, and they said, it is not good for man to be alone. Therefore Adam came back, and he complained to God that though this world was most beautiful, and he loved the world that God made for him, there was no creature like unto himself. And then he created from the creature who is called the mother of all the living. When he saw her, mother of all the living, he called her woman because she came from his own side. And now his life is fulfilled. And now he can have joy. Now he can have peace. Now he can go and conquer the world. Now he can do the other works. Now he can accomplish things he could never have accomplished before. And the greatest work that he can accomplish with her is that he can now bring new life into the world. He can ornament the world. Just as our Lord Jesus, when God the Father created the world, he made it most beautiful. He created a beautiful heavens and a beautiful earth. If you saw the world on the third day of creation, at the end of that third day, and you saw the heavens filled with beautiful blue sky, and you saw the earth and the green trees and the plants, and you saw the sea and its magnificence, you could say, certainly this is most beautiful. What can be done better than this? But then God decided it wasn't beautiful. Likewise, like unto the first three days, you St. Augustine talks about it, and he says, what did God say when he created man? 
He made him the sign of the earth, and he said, Let us make man in our own image, and unto our own likeness. So there's two parts of man's creation. When a dog is born, and the dog is just as beautiful a dog, just a wonderful dog when he's born, if you meet him 160 years old, he's the same dog. This doesn't bark quite as loud. But he's the same dog. He's just as wonderful as he was when he was born. But God did not make man like that. God made man wonderful. He made man beautiful. He made man perfect, but it's not beautiful enough. Not perfect enough. There's something more. He said, I am going to make man in my own image. Like a photograph. A mirror reflection of myself. But unto my likeness, Unto means movement. If you're meant different from all the other creatures, is God gave us a free will of which we can freely act like God. Now, a dog barks. God made dogs to bark. But when a dog barks, he only barks because he has to bark. Because it's the nature of a dog to bark. And that's not being like God. It is love. That is why the most beloved apostle would simply say, when asked, what is God? And St. John would say, Deus caritas es. God. But then he wanted him to love. That is why when God created Adam, St. Paul, 2,000 years later, but what is that marriage? It is a marriage for something to ornament the world. You must ornament the world with children. You must ornament the world with saints. You must ornament the world with faith. You must ornament the world with goodness. You must ornament the world with, the, with all the, the treasures of our Holy Roman Catholic faith so that when you build a house, you will build a house and you will make sure that there is a crucifix in it. You will make sure that there is prayer in it. You will make sure that God is in it. You will make sure that God is in the house that you build and God is in the home which you find yourself. Then you will raise children like Tobias raised his own son named also Tobias. And it says about Tobias, but he raised his son in the fear of God rather than men. You must have children, as many children as God sends, and they must be raised in the fear of God rather than the fear of men. They must consider that God is first, and God must be the center of their entire life and their entire being. That's why you are married. Now, how do you ornament? St. Paul says the man is like unto Christ. And Christ with him. And how does he express this love? By dying on the cross. So it's a very simple rule for husbands. How do you become a good husband? It's very simple. You just have to die. You must die to yourself completely. You must understand that your, your values, I mean not your values, the values of Christ are the essential values, but your, your whatever you want and your needs are absolutely 100% irrelevant. Here on the day of marriage, you receive a wife. You receive a treasure, a most beautiful wife. You receive a treasure. And this treasure that is given to you is worth more than you will ever be. And therefore, you must live up to that treasure. You must make sure that you provide for her a home. You provide for her peace. You provide for her love. You provide for her children. You then provide for those children. And you recognize that you are just plain not important. That's why, for instance, in a good marriage, you know that the um, uh, many husbands told me, you know, Father, I used to be the most important thing in my wife's life. And then we had a kid. And then I was number two. And then we had another one. Now I'm number 14. Because he's got 13 kids. As a man, you go down the line. And you keep going down the line. And you, because you are exceedingly unimportant. And you pour out your blood, and you pour out your heart, and you pour out your soul for the one that is important, which he was this treasure that God has given you, and the children that shall come from her. And that these things are the most important things. Say, what does St. John, the beloved apostle, say? What's the story of Holy Thursday night? On Holy Thursday night, our Lord Jesus Christ walked out from a bloody sweat in a state of total exhaustion, pain, and agony, and there he met a mob. And there he met the soldiers. He met Judas, his own priest, and was crucified, died, and was buried. And what happened? What does St. John tell us? And he loved his own, and he loved them unto the end. You know, the trouble of the world today is 
And there are no fathers in it. The father is the one who loves. And there is no love in the world today because there are no fathers. We need fathers. Fathers must love their children. Fathers must love their spouses, the wife. A priest of church, his spouse is the Holy Church. His mother is the Blessed Virgin Mary. His children are all the children that God sends him, and he must love them and be a father. And there, a father of a family must love and be a father. And love makes us call, climb mountains. What is it that makes men do great things? The love of a girl. If you don't love a girl, you're worthless. The fact is, it's the love of a woman that makes man do great things. Love of a woman that makes a man rise. Love a woman that makes a man able to conquer all obstacles. And this love must bear fruit. This love must bear fruit. It must be ornamented. And hence this fruit we pray for in your marriage, that there be a sacred fruit of little babies, a sacred fruit of holy children that are going to populate heaven. They must be the saints that will fight against the Antichrist. We are getting towards the end of times. It must be the saints who become the priests of the next generation. They must be the saints who will bear children who will carry on the faith to the next generation. They must be the saints who will fight against the enemies of the modern of, of the Catholic world, the enemies that are all found throughout this modern world, and who will be ready to die for their holy faith. And they will have a great joy in their hearts. And they will have a great strength inside of them. And so remember, it's the most great treasure, and the man must simply be ready to die. And what is marriage? Marriage is matrimony. Matrimony means matris, of the mother, monium, duty. It's the duty of mother. That's what marriage is. Remember that mother is what the devil hates more than anything else. He can't stand mother. That's why he's trying to take all modern girls and turn them into lesbians. Take all modern girls, turn them into modern kind of fighters. Turn them into, 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 into this modern feminists. He's trying to destroy womanhood. But the devil will never be able to succeed in destroying womanhood because there will always be mothers. And mothers will crush the Satan's head. In Genesis chapter 3, when Eve was most depressed because she had failed so badly, she had led Adam to sin, she had committed great maliciousness, and she was so terrified. But then God spoke to the serpent, and she knew the serpent's being punished first, and then she knew she was going to be punished next. And then Adam was going to be punished last. And she was terrified when the serpent was being punished. And God said to the serpent, you will wallow upon your belly, you will wallow upon the belly in the dust. And I will put enmity between thee, the wicked serpent, and the woman. And imagine in the heart of Eve, there's still hope for a woman. There's enmity between thee and the woman. And that there will come a woman from me who will be able to fix all the wrongs that I have done. And she began to have hope. And so when God was speaking to the serpent, he was angry with the serpent. He was yelling at the serpent. He was cursing the serpent. And what was he doing? He was giving hope to Eve. Enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed of Satan and her seed. She shall have a seed. There shall be a man who shall repair the evils of Adam. There shall be a woman that shall repair the evils of Eve between thy seed and her seed, and she shall crush thy head. And thou shalt lie in wait for her heel. Motherhood is going to destroy Satan. And it happened on the day when the angel Gabriel came and said, Wilt thou be the mother of God? Because she must also accept by a free will. The 15-year-old girl, the Blessed Virgin Mary, wilt thou accept to be the mother of God? She could say no. And if she said no, there is no crushing of the head of the serpent. There is no Christ being born who can die on the cross for our sins. And there is no hope for us. It's a very important conversation. And she said, fiat, let it be done to me according." By convincing Adam to do something other than what God wanted, make men do what she wants. She must use this power to make men do what God wants. To make she does that, she destroys and crushes the head of the serpent. And lastly, we ask for the blessing of the threefold blessing of the marriage blessing, which will be done after the canon, the canon of the mass, right after the paternoster and the consecration. And the blessing is given. It's an ancient blessing. 
very ancient blessing coming from the Old Testament. And we ask the blessing to be done of the Holy Bride, of the beautiful bride. And the blessing is, may you be beloved of your husband, as was Sarah. May you, may you be faithful, as was Sarah. May you be wise, as Rebecca. And may you be beloved of your husband, as was Rachel. The beloved is Rachel, wise as Rebecca, and faithful as Sarah. So you be beloved of Rachel. Rachel was the one who married Jacob, who was faithful to Abraham, even though he gave her no children for so many years. And yet she remained faithful, faithful, faithful. And the fidelity of Sarah, and the wisdom of Rebecca, and the love who is going to have the blessing. You know how we normally have the blessing in the Philippines. I have my Philippine ritual here somewhere. You know, so that we have the blessing of the normally in the Philippines when we do the marriage. We have the giving of the money. If you remember, that's really important. We have the we have the blessing of Ray. We and then we do the blessing of I, I, of the other blessing, which is Isaac, Jacob, and Abraham. The Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob blessing, which we don't do over here. Jacob, you receive the blessing of the three wives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in the Philippines, they still have the custom of making sure to do the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and put the cord right around. And so all those things we won't miss. But uh, so we'll do that at the end. But in any case, so it's a very, you still receive, when she receives the blessing of Rachel and the blessing of Rebecca, at the same time, we'll also pass on to you the blessing of the three husbands, which was done in the custom of the Philippines. In any case, we're close to that. God bless you all then. And remember, in the time of the blessing, remember that you kneel down, you kneel down for the, for when you, if you're not kneeling, just do what you need to turn around and give you a blessing. Okay. All right. God bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.